Welcome back. Today we're going to revisit a fly that we've done uh, that I've tied on film uh, probably a half dozen times between the different camera angles and um, many striples. We're going to do Kelly, Kelly Gallup's uh, dungeon. Um, not that, that there's anything that I'm going to add or do differently in this one, it's just I want to highlight uh, different color combinations. So I've long said that if I was only able to fish one fly for the rest of my life, it would either be an olive or a black dungeon. Um, just so much confidence in that pattern, it just flat out catches fish. Um, this may throw a wrinkle into it though. This is going to be the peacock dungeon um, off of the stuff that we had, that I had dyed this year um, off of the deer hair and haven't had any time to get this on the water yet but really excited to see how this does um, it's going to be a little mix between uh, your black and olive really and then you can see there's the peacock i highlighted this in the one video kelly did a, a shot on it um, wildly inconsistent it ranges the the dying process for this the stuff that i'm using wildly inconsistent but you can see the different range that we get this one's almost a pure black with some peacock tips this one that in kelly's shop is listed as the dark this is the light right here where it's like a mix between um a peak or a olive um peacock is what it is but that's listed as the light right there and then this is the stuff that I really like. I just haven't found quite the feathers yet, but this has the transition from the blue to the green and then your clean black break and everything. Super sexy stuff right there. Um, these are all off of the trimmings. Eventually I'm gonna have them available in a trim bag. Um, at some point, I, I don't know when just yet, but uh, it, is, it is something that you guys can look forward to. It will be available shortly. One last thing I want to touch on before I get into the actual time of this fly is the consistency that I have found with the, with the stuff that I'm using to dye this black. Wildly inconsistent on the body hair. What is not inconsistent is the bucktails. Look at those things. I mean, that's just freaking... You're, you're not going to find anything like that out there. These pike and musky guys, bass, they're going to lose their shit over this stuff. Um, this transition is just unreal. You get that bluish teal all the way up into that green and everything. Very consistent on the tails. Another thing, a little uh, uh, shameless plug here. When was the last time you saw a bucktail do this? Flexible. It's flexible. It's not like all folded up and everything you can see the you can see the entirety of the tail it took me a little while to get that but I was I was so tired of fighting freaking bucktails when I'm using them and then they're all twisted up some of the ones that I sold earlier this year are twisted up that way but I was working toward this I think I finally cracked the code um, super excited about that um, nothing's going to be cracking or breaking on your bent. It's all pliable, all usable. Very happy about that. Very limited supply on Bucktail this year. Next year, I'm hoping to be um, in the thousands um, is what the goal is. I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to that. It's pretty ambitious, but uh, we'll see. Anyhow, enough to talk about the hair and the... Um, Tails. I'm just pretty excited about it. It's been consuming my life for about the last six, seven months, so I had to talk about it a little bit. Anyhow, on to the actual tying of the fly, and I don't have my rear camera monitor, so I'm, I'm hoping that I keep my shoulder out of the way for the most part. I think the way I have the camera set up is pretty good. Um, but on with the time, like I was saying. Now for the tail, we're just gonna go with a black marabou, and that's because I have not found the perfect feather yet. Get out of there. I 
have not yet found the perfect feather for this pattern. It's really, really close, and but I know with a different color of marabou, um, it it would it would really set this fly apart. I'll find it eventually, and then probably just post a picture or something of it. Um, maybe with details on the recipe, so you guys can replicate it if you want. But uh, this one is very, very close to being how I want it. So we'll get that black in there for the tail. We're just gonna run that forward. Have our coverage, everything's good. Internal flash on this tail. Um, I messed around with some different colors on this as well for the internal flash. I don't really see it being a big difference one way or the other, to be honest with you. Um, I went with like a mix of a black and a green and all sorts of different stuff. I ultimately settled on this black uh, flash of boo. So there we go, we're gonna get three on each side. Like I said, just for some internal flash on that tail. And then we're gonna go with our second stack of marabou right over the top of that. Getting some rain out there today. I don't know if the camera's picking it up. It's pretty steady rain. Boy, we sure needed it too. Then lower part of Montana, southern Montana is flooding like crazy and up here we're, we've been choking on dust very very little moisture this year yeah, historic floods on the Yellowstone I'm sure everyone's seen that and drought up here go figure itself get that secure into place and then we're going to create a dubbing loop for our body here One, we're going to use this ice dub peacock or peacock black. Not real heavy on this. You don't want. I, I don't like them. I don't like the bodies like extremely bulky. I just like good coverage throughout. Just good coverage. There we go. That one's a little bit thick at the bottom. I'm gonna wind up cutting some of that out, I'm sure. Get a half inch and then we'll get this in the cradle. Spin that back up. And then we'll start on with our body. Making sure that you got good coverage, not having any gaps or anything. And then just one, one wrap right in front of the next just to give you some nice complete coverage. And there you can see that body on that peacock really gives a, a nice distinct look 
uh, to the body of this fly. Now it's time for a selection of the schlappen, and for that, this is another one. I went back and forth on this a good bit uh, with like some um, greenish olive, you know, grizzly hackle schlappen and everything, and I never quite found the combination that I wanted. So I went back to the black, and this this is perfect right here. You can see this this sheen that you get on some of these feathers. I go through and I select them right there. That'll be my back one, I think. This will be my front. Typically, when when you know when we're tying these black dungeons. Um, these are the feathers that you're looking for right here, just the pure black, and you don't want that sheen. Sometimes you do, um, but a lot of times these ones are the ones that get overlooked. Now, they don't make a huge difference in the fly um, when you actually see it on there. It's more so for me, I think, than anything. Um, I just like the way that it looks, and it goes along with the theme on this fly. So, is this going to be my front or back? There we go. Goes along with the overall theme for the color, and I, I don't know, like I said, I just really like the way that it looks. So, this is what I settled on for that, or for this particular variation of the dungeon. So, we'll go ahead and just trim that up. Half hitch once again. Get that through. And then we're going to take this. I'm actually going to use the tool here so my hand's out of the way. Not that I needed that feathers long enough, but this will keep my hand out of the way and we'll get one wrap. That's a bit on the long side for this hook. It's a size four. I could have picked one a little bit smaller, but I'll, yeah, I could have got some smaller hackle on that for sure. I'll just kind of preen it back and it'll it'll look good. It'll work. Let me just rip this right through. Actually, get out. Counter wrap on that wire and then get this in here. Yeah, that hackles. Definitely a little bit on the long side. That's all right. We'll make it work. And then grab this excess. Like I was saying before, like that sheen doesn't really show up too awful much on the hackle once you get it wrapped and actually into place on the hook. Um, from the front side, you can catch it a little bit. Um, but overall, I mean, I don't think it makes a huge difference. Uh, you can see it a little bit there. Uh, I like the way that it looks, so that's, that's what I'm going with. Next up on the legs here, we're going to go with the chartreuse olive and black um, fly enhancer. I'm just going to set these on here and set it to. Get a little figure eight on there. Get these picked up to where we want them. They're sitting right on top, falling naturally. Two wraps, pull down tight. That wire or that thread's going to go down into your rubber legs. Everything's nice and secure now. And then we're just going to trim these off right now. Now for an overwing, and this is the portion of the fly that I'm probably going to allude to a couple of times because I just hadn't found what I wanted. The once I do, this fly's going to be super, super, just, um, it, yeah, it's going to be that good. I can't even find words for it. <laughs> that's, that's the excuse that I'm going to use right there for not being able to think right now. I'm just going through here trying to select some thicker marabou for overwings. I'm going to pick all of these out right now. While I have the time, and that'll let me just kind of ramble on a little bit about 
whatever it is here until I can find all this marabou that I want. But uh, yeah, something with a little bit of a sheen to it. Kind of like what the, uh, the schloppen has. Once I find that for marabou, or I may try my hand to die on my own, um, it, it's gonna be, it's gonna be something else there. You won't see any of these in the, in the fly bins at the shops, I guarantee you that. All right, we'll go with those pieces right there and make it work. All right, so to finish out this back half of the fly, and you know what? I don't have any damn connection wire. I don't think. All my tiny stuff is in boxes and ready to be getting packed up. I'm, I'm only picking out what, uh, what I need for these videos and going from there. But I thought I brought out some connection wire, but I guess I didn't. My penalty for that one will have to be an extra step in the editing process. There we go. Trim that off. Everything looks good. Just touch this up. Everything's set. There's the back half of the Peacock Dungeon. And let's make sure real quick here that I don't have it. I'll be back. wire everything's good there uh, I've got the two beads put on everything's squared away we're on to the front hook now this is a size 1 MFC 7050 we're gonna get a thread base down for the eyes and we'll go ahead and throw this in uh, let me back that up just one for this, I'm going to use MFC's um, glitter eyes. This is a the blue glitter. It's a it's a large dumbbell eye. Um, anything under this size um, of a hook or a front hook, I'll move it down to a medium. So my ones and above, I use the large um, twos and below. I'm into the to the mediums and then the mini dungeons that, or the mini mini dungeons, excuse me. I I use the uh, the smalls. Uh, this glue's going right to the trash when I'm done. Got it thickened up on me. gel than anything at this point. But it'll work to secure some eyes in. There we go. Eyes are good and secure. We're going to go ahead and get the rear hook on now. Connect those two. Everything looks pretty good there. We'll get our rear hook on. I went with some blue beads on the back. Um, you can use obviously whichever color you want. I don't think that that's gonna make or break or catch more fish than a red bead. It's just, I don't know, I, I like it. It matches the, the eyes. I, I don't know, but like I said, it, it doesn't make a difference one way or the other which, which color bead you use though. Let me see, let's rotate that down just a touch, and then I want right there. That's a good distance in the back. Get all this 
Arms connected. Double this back over, and then we're going to start building our skirt for this fly. Now 
we're going to go back into the schlappen. I'm going to move forward on this one a little bit. The stem was a little rigid in the back. And then we'll just get this tied in. Track that stem up real good. Grab our hack pliers and then we'll just run this right to the back. Same as before, I usually like to go with about two wraps in the front just to give it a little bit more bulk and then work my way to the back. Peel all this out, get everything nice and clean. There we go. There we go. Get a wrap around that, and then we'll just counter wrap this. Same as before, just rip it right through. Don't try and dodge all the individual fibers and everything. If you trap a couple, they pick right out, not a big deal. Those two are done, that's now set. Trim out that back piece there. We are good to go. Now we're gonna go on to our rubber legs again. We're gonna do a set of three in the front. Same as before, just figure eight right over top of that. Once your figure eight's done, and before you tighten it down, just grab all of your legs, pick them up, adjust them where you want them, and then get a wrap or two in front, pull straight down, and your legs are set. Everything looks good there. Now we're back to our marabou, and I'm probably gonna double this one up. Let me find the thickest one here. Get out of there. Yeah, I'm gonna double this up. I'm gonna use two plumes of marabou. For our cover, and once again, I want this plume going back into at least my third waypoint of that piece of marabou that I used for the skirt. Between a third and a half is typically about where I like those to be. We'll just take and trim this and then get this second piece on here. This one's a little bit thicker, closer to that woolly bugger marabou like I talked about earlier. We'll get that in there. Set this over the top of that first one and that'll give us a nice full overwing. And get that secure, I'll bring this around. Now we have a nice clean platform for our deer hair. There you can see, legs are hanging down. You've got the nice transition from the marabou pieces. I'll peel this one off finally. All of that marabou just kind of meshes into one. Gives a nice little transition going all the way back. Let me trim these up. Now we'll get that out of the way. Throw the straw right there and get ready for the deer hair. All right, so on this one, I've got a couple of options here. I'm gonna try and pick the best one to which I think is gonna match. I'm gonna take this one right here. It's a little bit darker. The fibers are a little shorter, but I like the looks of it. Yeah, this is definitely a little bit shorter. Mid-season. Clean that out. 
think I'm actually going to grab a little bit more there. That's a little bit sparse for the color. Grab just a little bit more. Sometimes 
just got to help it. Did I get a good spin there? Almost a full spin. Almost. I'm just going to help that just a little bit. There we go. Everything looks better now. Now we'll bring this back in. Get that eye nice and clean. And whip finish right in front of your hair. That's the first hair work I've done in almost a year. I've been so focused on producing it that I haven't actually been using it at all. A little bit rusty, but I think we're still... Yeah, we're still doing all right. Like riding a bike. All right, now we're just going to go and trim this out. It's going right back to the collar. Just want to clean that up a little bit. Clean up around that collar some more. There we go. Now on this bottom section, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to make a nice level cut. I want to go right above the eyes. And I'm just going to draw that blade right through there, nice and level. Stay above your eyes. You don't want to nick those eyes with your uh, with your blade, or that blade's not going to be cutting any more hair for you. There we go. See that nice level, flat portion of that head. That's what you're looking for on this because it's imitating the scalping. This is also a stabilizing feature along with the uh, along with the collar. Oh, blade just went through my finger. It didn't tickle. Just trimming that up right next to that straw. Everything's looking pretty clean right there. There's a couple of things that I want to uh, to dress up a little. I'm going to take this, move it around, and I just want to take and cut this at an angle. Just clean that up a little bit. A lot of that stuff I'm going to clean back up with the with the blade, but this I just want to get this rough cut. Right there. There you can see that underneath side, that sculpin look that we're after. Really nice flat broad, and then there's the pectoral fins right there. I want to clean out around these eyes so we can see those. Just a couple of cuts right through there. Expose those eyes. Really well. 
And actually, as I'm looking at it now, I was just thinking of it, probably what I'd be better off to do until I can get this marabou the color that I want is to stack varying colors. So I do the peacock on the bottom, black on the top. Keep the collar, I like that collar. That's a really good looking collar there. But once I find that marabou that kind of matches this right here, this fly's gonna be killer. This fly is gonna be unreal. Um, like I said, it's kind of that combination between the olive and black. My favorite color is a dungeon to fish. Minus yellow, I do like a yellow dungeon a lot. Caught a lot of big fish on yellow dungeons. But anyhow, that is the completed peacock dungeon. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, send them to me. I know I've been awful at replying to comments here over the last, oh, since I shot the last video um, about the deer hair release. I've, I, I don't know that I've replied to anybody, so. Once I get down in front of the computer again, I'll get back and reply to everybody. Sorry everyone for um, the delay on that. That uh, just, my time got away from me. <laughs> to say the least, time got away from me. Anyhow, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it helps you out. Um, Kelly has these, um, has the peacock deer hair on the website. Uh, Gallup slide in. Uh, he has them there. I'll be taking another run down and I do have some more uh, of the, the light peacock, which is what I used in this one right here. I have some more of that that'll be going down, uh, mainly three by four patches. I have a couple four by eights that I'll be taking down and uh, restocking him before I head to, head to the East Coast. But uh, like I said, questions or comments, guys, leave them with me. I'll get back to you. Thanks as always for watching. We'll catch you on the next fly.